Student loan debt in America reached a record high of $1.77 trillion in the first quarter of 2023. While that figure has since dropped slightly to $1.75 trillion in the first quarter of 2024, student loans of all types remain top of mind for borrowers. So we're continuing our focus on college and money. Betsy Mayotte, president of the Institute of Student Loans Advisors, joins us along with Kathy Mueller, our FAFSA expert. All right, we're going to hit the uh, student loans right now. Let's kind of just bring us up to date. What's going on with student loan forgiveness right now? What isn't going on with student <laughs> loan forgiveness right now? Boy. Uh, well, so let, let's just be clear. So there are certain programs that are, are, keep, are still going, they're still plodding along, nothing's changed, particularly public service loan forgiveness. That's a big one that people are get anxious about. No one's bothering with PSLF. But the new SAFE program that you and I have talked about before, which is payments based on income and this big interest subsidies, there's a few court cases. And We've kind of gone back and forth where the courts have went, stop doing save, ah, you can do it. Okay, stop doing save. So we're still sort of in the middle of those shenanigans. The bottom line right now, the save plan is still available today. People can still apply for it. What happens in the future, we'll have to see. Okay, gotcha. In fact, I was just talking to a newish kind of teacher and she had never heard of the save plan. And I was like, you gotta get on the save plan. So you do suggest people still to go on and take a look at that. Yeah, and see if it's a good fit for them. And if it is a good fit for them, they should apply for it. One thing that, you know, I'm not an attorney, uh, but one thing I, 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 even the judges in these cases have said that if SAVE ends up going away, they have no intention of harming borrowers that have already benefited from it. So they don't have to worry about losing those payments, so to speak. Okay. If it All goes right. away later. Gotcha. All right. So again, we're taking your questions. There's that 336-379-5775 about student loans and FAFSA. Um, Kathy, this is a FAFSA question. If you're an aunt or a grandparent that is raising their grandchild or niece and you carry them as the def dependent, do I use my income for the FAFSA? Well, let me say that depends. Uh, if they have not formally adopted the child, they will not use their income or information on the FAFSA. Uh, if the student's parents cannot be uh, contacted or the student has some kind of unusual circumstances, they can file the FAFSA without parent information indicating that they have unusual circumstances. Uh, so that may be the best option for that student, but they may want to talk to someone like us at Mapping Your Future if they need additional guidance on that. Okay. Betsy, this person is asking, I haven't paid my student loan since COVID and I'm going to start paying again, but my loan went out of business. How do I find out who holds my loan? I haven't received anything in the mail. Yeah, so there were a lot of loan servicers that decided to take their toys and go home during COVID. So we're really down to basically four for the direct loan program. But if, thankfully, if they go to studentaid.gov, which is the Department of Ed's website, that has all their federal loans and will tell them who the current holder is. Now, one thing I want to mention to this caller, writer, audience member, is that the fact that you didn't have didn't have any mail from them yet tells me they don't have your correct address. So. Once you figure out how the servicer is, that's the first thing you need to do is update your contact information. Okay, and we want to make sure everybody knows what we're talking about. So we've got a graphic to put up about studentaid.gov. This is the resource for you to go to for all things student loan. That is studentaid.gov. This is going to tell you who has your loan, how much your loan is, all that kind of stuff. It's also going to direct you to the save plan if that's where you want to look. Studentaid.gov is the one place that you should go. All right, Kathy, this uh, question is, my daughter is in grad school and lives at home. She works part time and is taking one class per semester. I last claimed her in 2023. She, should she complete the FAFSA and whose income should she use? So if she's a grad student, she's going to be independent. And so she'll need to use her own information. Now, uh, if she's taking only one class a semester, it may depend um, whether or not she qualifies for federal financial aid. Uh, but I would recommend going ahead and completing the FAFSA, and then the school can determine if she's eligible for any federal financial aid. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, what happens if you get an email or a text or a call and it says, we can help you with your student loan, Betsy? Well, it depends who the email or text is from, but if it's not directly from your loan holder, you should delete it, spam it, trash it, maybe possibly report it to the Federal Trade Commission. 
Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of scams out there, and some of them try to pretend to be the Department of Ed or the actual loan servicer. So when in doubt, go to the Department of Ed's website or the loan servicer's website directly and see if that's the correct phone number um, or email address. And if they're asking for a fee, run as fast as you can away. Because that is not for real. All right, That's this right. person is asking, what if I'm new to the state? I moved here from California. I don't remember my logins, and I know I still owe student loans. Guess which one, guess which website <laughs> I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, so so I, actually, it depends. So some people do have private loans, and private loans are not on studentaid.gov. Studentaid.gov is only for federal student loans. And if that's what this this caller has, then again, studentaid.gov is going to tell them where it is, how much they owe, what status it's in. Sounds like it may have been a few years since they paid attention to it. If it's in default, they should look into the Fresh Start program. But if they have a private loan, the answer is very, very different. Private loans, it's only going to show up on your credit report. But if you haven't paid attention to it for a long time, it may have dropped off your credit report. In that case, you want to tread cautiously. Uh, you might want to talk to an attorney that specializes in debt for private loans that you know you still owe but aren't on your credit report anymore. You might want to talk to them a little bit first. Mm, sounds complicated. Gotcha. Okay. All right. We're going to take a quick break. We've got one more segment for you to be able to ask questions about FAFSA and student loans.